Hello students, welcome in another lecture of your chemistry and this is your lecture number 4. So this is your chemistry class. Until now what we have discussed in the chapter metal in our surroundings. I just want to recall it, right? So what are the matter? Matter is something which occupies the space and has mass also, right? And then we talk about the physical nature of the matter that it is made up of particles then we talk about the characteristics of the particles of matter that the part particles of the matter have the space between them right particles of the matter are continuously moving i gave you some examples too particles of matter attract each other right again i have given you the examples then further we discuss about the states of the matter and three states of the matter like solid liquid and gases in case solids the each and every constant particles is very tightly packed and held together by the very strong force of attractions in between them and they are having a fixed volume and fixed shape right and they are, uh, they are the um, uh, constituent particles vibrate at its own positions they are not free to move apart right and they are having the very high compressibility they are rigid while in case of the liquid they can flow very easily they are having a fixed volume but not the fixed shape right and here the molecules are little far from each other so that they can uh, move from its real position right in case of the gases the particles are very uh, they can move very easily they are have there are uh, there is a presence of very less force of attraction between the constituent particles right and then we talk about the gaseous state after this the gaseous state I told you something about the effect of change of temperature why if you want to change the state of matter from the solid to liquid or liquid to the gas or even the gas to the solid or gas to the liquid right so there I have told you about something the effect of the change of the temperature in terms of the some particular terms right and then in this lecture what we will see we will further see that the effect of change of the pressure firstly we have begun what the effect of change of temperature and now we will see the effect of change of pressure have you ever seen that solid CO2? Do you have an idea? Have you ever heard about this term solid CO2? Yes, maybe, right? Okay, anyway, I am going to tell you what is CO, solid CO2? CO2 is a gas as we know, right? So CO2, how converted into a solid? You know at a very high pressure, when pressure is very high, then this gas, okay, what will happen when you will apply under a very high pressure the, when you will store the co2 under a very high pressure then it will be get converted into your solid carbon dioxide think right solid co2 gets converted directly to gaseous state or on decreasing of pressure to the one atmosphere so reverse you can do also so solid co2 in this case you you are getting what solid directly from the gases right so there you will not observe any liquid state and this is what this is why this solid co2 is also called as a dry ice okay and the rest conversion i told you earlier how you will convert the solid to the gas gas to the liquid and what the process is called as see the when you convert the solid to the gas this process is called as sublimation right and gas into the solid deposition right and if you want to change this liquid into the gas this process is called as vaporization the conversion of gas into the liquid is called as condensation in the same way if you will convert solid to the liquid this is called as fusion and the conversion of liquid into the solid is called as solidification right so that is all about your the changes which you are going to apply on a on any state of the matter maybe solid liquid or gas okay now further there is a one more thing how you will convert degree centigrade into the kelvin so now see if we are having a 20 um, a temperature which is at 25 degree centigrade okay and what you have to do you have to change this degree centigrade into the kelvin right so in this case what you will do you will add the 273 into 25 to change this degree centigrade into the Kelvin. Okay. So once you will add 273 in 25, you will get 298 Kelvin. Okay. In the same way, if in some questions they will ask you just convert this Kelvin into degree centigrade, then what you will do? 
you need to subtract this 273 from the given Kelvin temperature. Okay. So here if you will subtract this 273 from 300, then you will get 27 degree centigrade. Okay. So this is the answer. This temperature at degree centigrade will be 27 degree centigrade and 25 degree centigrade at degree cal at the Kelvin will be 298. Okay. So you must know all these things. Now we will go for the for, for the next topic and the next topic is your evaporation. Okay. So now do you ever heard about this term evaporation? What is evaporation? Evaporation is a surface phenomena. Have you ever seen that uh, the conversion of a liquid into the vapors? Even not its boiling point without the liquid reaching the boiling point. Yes, this process is your evaporation. Okay. We know that the particles of matters are always moving and are never at rest. At a given temperature to any gas, liquid or solid, there are particles with the different amount of kinetic energy. Right? In case of liquid, a small fraction of particles at the surface having the higher kinetic energy is able to break away from the force of attraction of that particles. Okay? and get converted into the vapors. This phenomenon of change of a liquid into the vapors at any temperature below its boiling point is called the evaporation. So that, that is a difference between the evaporation and boiling point. Evaporation is a surface phenomenon and boiling in case of the boiling it happens within the entire liquid. Okay and boiling occurs at a particular temperature at its boiling point while the evaporation occurs at any temperature okay if you will leave the some amount of the water on the surface or in a container for some time or even for the some days then what you will observe that the level of the water get reduced right so this is why this happens because of your evaporation okay so now in, and in case of the boiling it happens at a particular temperature why the evaporation occurs at any temperature okay and uh, in case of the uh, okay some factors which will affect the evaporation can you tell me the factors which will increase or decrease the evaporations just think about it okay so rate of evaporation increase if we will increase the surface area okay so increase the surface area means have you ever seen by putting the clothes for drying up we spread them out right so by increasing the surface area, what we are doing, we are increasing the, what is happening, uh, they will dry up little faster. Okay, so by increasing surface area, what will happen, the rate of evaporation will increases. Or even if we will increase the temperature, means during the summer, right? When increasing temperature means, means what? More number of particles get enough kinetic energy and go into the vapor state fine so by increasing the surface area by increasing the temperature or by next is decrease in humidity so what is humidity humidity is amount of water vapors present in the air that we know okay so normally the air around us cannot be uh, like cannot hold more than a definite amount of water vapor Suppose at a given temperature, right? If the amount of water in air is already high, the rate of evaporation will automatically it will get decreased. Okay. So if the weather is humid, then what will happen? The rate of evaporation will be get reduced. If it is not humid, then the rate of evaporation will be more, right? Next point, if we increase in wind speed or if the there, there is more wind, Okay, in that case, what we, what we will observe that the clothes dry faster as we have seen that the clothes gets dry faster on a windy day, right? This is why because the wind speed, it will, what it will do, it will increase the rate of evaporation. So by increase in, with the increase in wind, what will happen? Increase in wind speed, the particles of water vapors move away with the wind, okay? and decrease the amount of water vapors present in the surrounding. So that these are the factors which are responsible for the rate of evaporation. Okay. So have you seen that uh, this evaporation causes cooling? Yes. 
when there is sweating during the summers. So we can explain that. Okay. Okay. In the same way, you can explain ki why should we wear the clothes, uh, cotton clothes in summers. Right? Why do we see the water droplets on the outer surface of a glass containing the ice cold water? In the same way, we can explain all these concepts also. Like why we are observing the water droplets outside this, uh, um, outside a glass containing the ice cold water. Can you explain me why? Just you do one thing, take some ice cold water in a, some glass and put it somewhere on the table and observe what will happen up, after the some time. So, uh, what you will observe, soon we will see that the water droplets on the outer surface of the glass, the water vapors present in air on coming in contact with the cold glass of water, what will happen? They will lose energy and gets converted to liquid state. And that is what we will observe as water droplets. So that is all about this chapter, water in your surrounding. Okay, in, the, in my ne next lecture, I will uh, give you some problems which are based on your, this chapter, what um, matter in your surrounding. Okay, thank you.